Hey friends, I hope that you're doing well. Today, we are filming a workout that is a reader request. And this is going, the, the request was for a core workout that would be safe for folks recovering from diastasis recti, which is the separation of your abdominal wall. Um, and it usually happens after pregnancy or if you, for example, have gained a lot of weight at one point, and so the muscles in your, in your core are not um, as tightly together. They really act as a corset to hold everything in. And so when they separate, you're not really able to do a lot of the same movements that you would normally do um, to strengthen and stabilize your core. So I'm going to show you guys a core and glute activation workout um, that can also be really great for its for mobility, for stability, and for like a warm-up. So I'm actually going to use it today as a warm-up before strength training, but feel free to go through it a couple of times through uh, for an actual like workout. It's going to require a couple things. Um, so if you have a small loop resistance band, I do suggest it. Um, it just does add a little bit of an extra challenge to some of these movements. If you don't have it, don't worry about it. Not a big deal. I also want you to get some sort of weighted implement for our last exercise. Um, doesn't have to be a kettlebell, can be a backpack, can be a dumbbell, really whatever you've got. Um, pretty straightforward there. So we're going to go through a couple of different exercises. The majority of them are actually just on the ground and um, that will stabilize through our core and our glutes. Um, by stabilizing and strengthening your core and your glutes, you will allow your body to heal the diastasis that has taken place in your, in your abdominals. So when you have a diastasis recti, what you really want to avoid are any sort of like trunk rotation exercises that are common with a lot of our general core work. Um, so that includes things like crunches, sit-ups, um, even really, um, large twist exercises that you'll see in yoga, like if you're going into a plank and then twisting up and over, this will just open this diastasis even more when we're trying to stabilize and close it. So today's workout is perfect if you are looking for a different warm-up uh, than the one that I usually post, or if you are trying to strengthen those glutes and that core um, to heal up a diastasis. So, we're going to get started, have all of the movements on my phone, so we're just going to kind of follow along through there. Um, the first exercise that we're going to do is going to be for your core, and it's called the dead bug, which I know isn't the best name, but it's a great core stabilization movement. So we're going to basically go for five on each side. So I want you to lie down on your back. And I want you to bring your knees up to a tabletop position where they're just right above your hips. So you should automatically feel that core start to engage. Lift your arms up, look up, and you're going to alternate dropping your right leg and your left arm like so. So we're gonna do five on each side. You should feel that core engage. Make sure that your low back stays pressed to the floor and go to the other side. So if you can't drop your leg all the way to the floor, that's just fine. Just go until you feel your back start to separate. Awesome. If you have that loop resistance band, go ahead and grab it. And I want you to pull it up over your knees so that it's just right around the bottoms of your quads or your thighs. So it's just going to add a little extra resistance and we're going to go into some glute bridges. So when you're doing a glute bridge, you want your heels to be as close to your bum as possible and you push upwards through those glutes, not using the low back. We're going to do 10. Oh, hey, Juno. That's five. I want you also squeezing your core in so I feel my core muscles engaged. Hello. And I 
want you to now stay up in that bridge and I want you to drop your knees out to the sides and bring them back in like a clamshell. We're going to do 10 of these. Squeezing your core. Awesome job. Let those glutes touch the ground. All right, we're going to move now into another core activation before hitting those glutes one more time. So bring your feet up to tabletop position, hands by your side. We're going to do toe taps. So drop one toe down, bring it back up, and alternate. I want to do 10 per side, 20 total. Only drop as low as you can while keeping your low back touching the floor. That's 10. There's 20. Go ahead and rest for just a second. And we're going to then move into another glute activation movement. So we're going to do glute bridge marches. Now, if you feel like the glute bridge is putting pressure on your low back and it feels tight and you don't feel it in those glutes, you can skip the march and just do another round of glute bridges because we really want to make sure that you are not um, that you're not stressing your low back. So the march we're going to do ten total. So we're going to come up into the glute bridge, squeeze that butt, and we're going to just march. So one for ten. Squeeze that core. There's 10, drop down. <sighs> we're gonna do just a few more exercises, guys. So we're going to go into leg lowers. If you wanna take your band off, your hip, your, your legs, that's fine. Otherwise, just bring them up to as straight as you can. You can see I don't have perfect flexibility. If your legs are like this, that's totally fine too. But what we're gonna do is just drop our legs until you feel your back starts to come off the floor and come up. We're going to do 10. That's eight. So we're going to roll over and we're going to go into a reverse plank. Now this is safe for you to do because it really does require you to squeeze your core in. In a regular plank, you could kind of let it all hang out, um, which is not what we want to do. So for the reverse plank, you are going to start in a tabletop position. And if this is enough, if this is enough challenge for that glute, those glutes and core, Go ahead and leave it there. Otherwise, extend your legs out and hold. We're going to hold for like 30 seconds-ish. Make sure that you're squeezing those glutes and that core. Pull your belly button into your spine like someone's going to punch you in the stomach. Sorry for the violent image.
Awesome. Drop down. For our last movement, you will definitely need to remove the resistance band. Grab that weight, and we're going to stand up. Okay, so for the last movement, we're going to be doing what's called a farmer's carry. And this is a great movement, not just for your core, but for your shoulder stability as well. So just an added bonus, but it really does help you to make sure that you're not rotating. So it's an anti-rotation exercise, which is going to be super helpful when you're trying to heal that diastasis. So you're going to grab your implements, whatever it is. It should be relatively heavy. And I want you to stand up straight and tall, engage your core. You should be feeling it on the side that you're holding the weight because it's your body wants to just drop, but you want to hold it up straight and you're going to step. You're going to walk. Okay. Awesome job. So there you have it, your quick core and glute stability warm-up. Go through that twice through for a better workout, and definitely let me know your thoughts. If you like this style of training, I would love to know. Have a great day.